thank you again, everyone, for celebrating art and feminism. You're 10 with us today. My name is Kira Wisniewski, and I have the honor and privilege of being executive director here at Art and Feminism. I am joining you from uh, the in-person event in Houston. I am sitting outside of the main hall right now where we are doing um, all of our meals al fresco in Houston today. Uh, so I am very excited to have a conversation around an incredible resource that Wikimedia Argentina released last year on how to write about the LGBTQ plus community on Wikipedia. Uh, first, I do want to share the Art and Feminism Brave Friendly Space Agreement. I'm wondering, Vic, if you could share that slide for me. Uh, if not, that's also fine. The goal of this session is to create an encouraging space for collective learning. This requires intentional behavior wherein participants are conscious of and accountable for the effect of their statements and actions on others. We respect our experiences and the experiences of others and recognize we can't do this work without one another. We agree to hold each other accountable to foster a brave and friendly space. And you can see the whole brave friendly space agreement on the bit.ly on screen. A quick logistical note, speakers in this session will be presenting in both English and Spanish. Please take a moment now to select which language channel is appropriate for you. This is a screenshot to hopefully help you navigate. We also have some folks in the chat available to help you if you need further assist assistance. So joining me today is Vic Cifrisco from Wikimedia Argentina, Owen Blacker from the Wiki LGBT uh, user group, and Sofia Stankoff from uh, Art and Feminism. Uh, they've all been amazing collaborators around the translation of this guide to English that uh, Wikimedia Argentina originally created. So I'd love to welcome you all now to just kind of say hi and share your pronouns so we can just do a quick, quick little introductions. Why don't we start with you, Vic? Hi, good afternoon from Argentina. At least here, it's the beginning of the afternoon. My name is Vic. As Vicira mentioned, I'm part of Wikimedia Argentina. Concretely, I am the person responsible for the program of cooperation and centralization of Wikimedia Argentina. And I also collaborate with Wikimedia LGBT. And I'm part of the organizing committee of Curing Wikipedia, which is a virtual conference that's about to happen. I'm here to present this resource. As Kira mentioned a few minutes ago, we did it about a couple of years ago. We developed it a couple of years ago in Spanish, and it's about to be launched in English through a collaboration process to uh, for translating resources. It's a guide that's trying to offer insights and tools about what are the challenges and what does it mean to write about people who are trans, travesti, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and other identities of the LGBT community. I would like to confirm that the interpretation is working well because we got a little Perfect, you can hear me. The translation team, we was collaborative. We collaborated with Wikimedia LGBT, Art and Feminism, and Wikimedia Argentina. And it took several months to develop. So we're gonna tell you about this experience. First, I wanted to present how this resource came up to also talk about what the resource contains, what it proposes. In our Wikimedia Argentina, we realized and we saw that it was important 
to offer uh, some solution or reflection or a proposal to reduce the content gap linked to LGBT culture, the history and biographies of meaningful people for the LGBTQ plus community. Initially, our objective was to do it at a local level in Argentina to try to propose part of the story of our history of our community on Wikipedia. And then we made that broader to the rest of the uh, Spanish speaking countries. And now we're trying an even more global gesture for the uh, resource to be useful for other regions with other languages. What we wanted to do initially in about 2021 was collaborate with the uh, Argentinian LGBT community to think about those challenges that we identified in Wikipedia and to think what are the, the joints that we could build to, to bridge that gap. The first thing we thought was important was to listen to the LGBTQ community to understand what was their what were their interests and needs at a local level and to be with them. So we did a series of workshops and activities where we tried to share those questions and we built some uh, closeness with the LGBT community. They could be interested in the Wikimedia movement. Initially, uh, one of the gestures I wanted to mention, because it could be useful for other chasper, chapters and other users, was to have really clear what it was that we were proposing to the LGBT community and listen to feedback to be able to inform the future proposals. And amongst that was to take into consideration what was the agenda specifically for the LGBTQ community. And with that, to be in communication with that agenda and have a, a communication strategy to take into account what are the significant dates for that community to have activities. It's, I'm going slow, it's hard to read in English and speak in Spanish, so if I, if I'm, if I stumble it's because I'm facing bilingualism. The first collaboration and of this guide we did in relationship to Victoria Stefano who is an uh, Argentinian travesti, an activist and journalist, part of the marches in her, she did marches in her place in, the, in her place called Santa Fe. Uh, second, that has to do with this process of trans translation. Anne Millet collaborated with us, who is a transmasculine lesbian art activist who dedicates principally to social work and processes that have to do with mental health especially for people who are trans and travesti. There's a very interesting book, if you would like to read it, it's in Spanish. It's called Cis Sexism and Health. And another collaborator was Kit Hayam, who I can present more deeply, who uh, is a, they're a writer, a historian, specialist in queer and trans history. They wrote a book before we were trans. Uh, that's the full title. And, they worked with us doing some notes that we'll mention later on. And also the group groups and Wikimedia uh, organizations like Garden Feminism and Wikimedia Argentina. Uh, a part of this brief presentation, the guide is uh, has this work of Anne Millet, who was a little note about the word travesti. Uh, we'll explain later why we decided to do the note, but we encountered that in the translation process, the word travesti does not translate into English and to other, it's sometimes in other communities who speak Spanish that could use the resource. It is, a, it is a word that in Argentina and in other countries in Latin America went from being an insult to be a gesture of pride to take back that word from part of the travesti activists, similarly to what the word queer, what happened with the word queered in English. But this did not happen in all the Spanish speaking countries. In Spain, the travesti does not have the same wide acceptance that it has in Latin America and in Argentina. And it's not recovered. And it's important for us to recover that word to try to sustain that exers, the, the senses of why we use the things we'd use in our movements. 
Owen, would you like to uh, take the mic for a minute? Sure. Uh, so in the same vein that uh, we wanted to clarify the, the term travesti for uh, audiences who may not be familiar with it, uh, we thought that the, there's a similar history of uh, language changing in, in English. Um, and so we contacted Dr. Kit Hayam, who is a, a writer, academic and heritage practitioner, who, as Vic mentioned, recently published the book Before We Were Trans, A New History of Gender, which is currently a finalist for the 2023 Lambda Award for Transgender Nonfiction. Uh, this global history of gender nonconformity tells the stories of people who, to quote Kit, show us that gender has never been fixed, essentialized or unchallenged. Kit's academic work focuses on developing new methodological approaches to transgressive gender and sexuality in historical literature and culture. So their book is also about history and how we can do history in a, a more humane, ethical and anti-racist way. Um, and so we felt that Kit would be ideal to, to write a, a, a note on uh, language use in, in English, and they sought to, to defamiliarize some of the terms we often take for granted when writing about the past to help uh, readers understand that words like man, woman, and cross-dressing aren't intrinsically any more objective or neutral than transgender, for example. Um, and uh, so we worked with Kit to to put together a, an essay they wrote that's added to this guide. I will hand back to you, Vic. Within the content that the resource has, there's an identification of what are the barriers that we face when we want to write about the LGBTQ community in Wikipedia. I wrote some of the most important ones within is the tension that we see in relation to the concept of encyclopedic relevance, uh, noting that the words that's used in English, and it has to do with the difficulty of finding references, enough sources to get to that criteria of references that we need to guarantee that our content has relevance. This is due specifically for to in historical invisibilization that the LGBT community has lived through. That invisibilization means that significant events, milestones in history that have been significant to our community, people, even cultural productions were not documented or weren't documented enough to be able to build that. Uh, our community, one of the main uh, things about is that part of its story, it's very connected to humanity in many uh, countries in Latin America. A big part of our history is still registered orally, and we have a lack of graphic records. We also find that there's few or barely any photographer or audiovisual tools. So just like we didn't write about our history, it wasn't registered our history or through photography. This generates a, a vacuum of sources for us to get to that encyclopedic relevance. When we thought about what the sources are that we do have right now, one of the most important places is the journalistic production, is journalism. Because this production, we have to be more careful every time, especially talking about the LGBTQ community, because there are some identities that are continually more invisibilized than others. When we're talking about uh, activism in Latin America, we were learning about more identities 
uh, some identities who were able to access these public history more than others, which is why we insist that these spaces uh, and these gaps for the transvesti and transgender community is bigger for than it is for other identities. We also notice that in many cases, when transgender and transvesti people we found ourselves being criminalized and what we call spectacularization of these Property identities. Come into the journalistic we see ourselves being criminalized in the media or as something that has to do with or the exotic seeing ourselves spectacle. being exotified or being made a show of and caricaturized. And so within this space, this emptiness of having to, of being able to create our own stories, we saw this continuing invisibilization and we also saw that there was a severe disconnect in how people were using pronouns to describe queer people and people who are transgender and transvesti uh, including dead names for people who no longer wanted to use their former names in their activism. So if I wanted to write, for example, about one of the people who was hard time hearing the speaker. sometimes find a vacuum of information that doesn't allow me to do that article. This is like this because Kai Norbina died before this law, a few months before approving this law, and didn't get to the moment in which communication channels started to identify the need of writing with respect about those identities. And they can't take back that figure that's very politically significant because they don't have enough production. These are some of the problems that the guide has to reflect and it has some strategies and invites us to think about strategies that are uh, have artistry, they're small. It's what we can do to start building the LGBTQ uh, memory and take it to Wikipedia and other movements. This is the presentation. And now I will open the conversation so Sophia and other people can participate. Thank you, Vic. Um, yes, Sophia, I'd love to bring you in um, if you wanna, if you could please introduce yourself too. Um, hi everyone, my name is Sophia and I am the Canadian Regional Ambassador for Art and Feminism um, located in Jojage, also known as Montreal. Um, and should, should we do the, all the introductions first or should I just talk a bit about how I came to this project? Um, we could enter, oh, and I know you spoke, but didn't get a chance to introduce yourself yet. So if you want to introduce yourself and then I, Sophia, you can go from there. I, can, I was meaning to introduce myself when I started and completely forgot. Uh, so I'm Owen Blacker. I use he, him pronouns. I'm about 30 kilometers outside of London in, in the United Kingdom. Uh, I am a part of the governance team for the Wikimedia LGBT plus user group. And I see the note from our interpreters for all of us to please slow down. Um, so beyond the work I do with art and feminism, I'm also a graduate student in sociology and I look a lot at uh, narrative, power dynamics, marginalization um, and technology. Um, so, Something that I had been working on at Art and Feminism is translations, mostly in my case to French and translation guides and sort of um, not just the actual tangible translations, but thinking about how we do translation 
And so uh, last year when Vic presented this amazing guide, at it was like a Wikimedia lightning talk kind of event, people showing different projects. Afterwards, we just, we were talking and we mentioned how impressed we were by the presentation, by the guide, by the type of work. Um, and since we had already been doing, talking a lot about translation, um, I, I mean, I think it was Kira who had the idea of like, what if we translated this guide uh, to English as part of a move that we're trying to do at Art and Feminism to move away from creating everything in English, everything with the American cultural references, and then translating that out to the rest of um, the regions, right? So it's this move away from the centrality of Western Anglo-American culture, which is very much, um, you know, it's hard to move away from when it's a, an organization that was founded in the States, but it's also part of Wikimedia's issue as well. English Wikimedia is where uh, Wikipedia and projects are, are where things start and then they get translated out into other projects. So trying to move away from that. Um, and so we approached Vic and we started to have conversations. And I think that's when, uh, when we looked at the first draft of the English version, uh, we had that, we both had a kind of a reaction to the use of the word travesty because it was, it isn't one that is used in English. It is used in French um, and it does, as uh, Vic was talking about earlier, it didn't have the same connotations that we had understood and, um, you know, very much inspired by the um, sort of post-colonial or decolonial practices of thinkers like um, Walter Mignolo um, and uh, Encarnacion Quiter Rodriguez, who I can link to, um, and just thinking about how um, the tendency for everything to start in English and export that and for things to get flattened and erased when they get translated from other cultures to English, if what it exists doesn't fit already understood or known kind of concepts and terms, we very much decided that, you know, we wanted to uh, have more discussions about this terminology, um, which is when there was this idea to add an appendix explaining the term and the history of the term and its political meaning instead of just, you know, removing it and sort of not going to that place. Um, so it very much when you were repeating the phrase and uh, friendly space policy at the beginning, Kira, it very much made me think of that instead of being like, oh no, what do we do with this? Let's run away or avoid, pretend it didn't happen. We were very much like, oh, we don't understand this. Let's ask more questions. Let's involve more people until we have the perspectives that we need and the collaboration. Um, and we're, and we kind of rely on that doing it together uh, approach. Um, and then from there, um, that's when I believe Owen had the idea of like, well, if we're going to start explaining the Spanish terminology, let's also include more history of English terminology, because um, just like how in Spanish, um, the word doesn't necessarily have the same connotation in every Spanish speaking country. Um, there's a lot of terminology in English around the LGBTQ that is also not agreed upon. And so, you know, this document just keeps getting these layers added to it, which we hope will add to the general understanding and the nuances, the, the messiness, you know, that exists in language and in life and lead to more like, I don't want to say faithful, but a deeper and more nuanced production of biographies that exist for the LGBTQ on uh, Wikipedia. Does anyone else thanks. want to comment on that? Yeah. No, thanks, Sophia. Owen, I want to invite you back in. I know you spoke a little bit about Kit's background, but just about a little bit more expanding upon what Sophia was talking about here. So, yes, I I was very conscious when we were talking about um, the word travesty and how that might be uncomfortable as well as unfamiliar uh, to English speakers in the global north who've just never come across the term um, and that, you know, we can recognize it as cognate to uh, terms that we wouldn't consider appropriate to use now. Um, 
and I was conscious not only of that, but also at the moment, some of the not necessarily entirely good faith conversations uh, around the use of the word queer um, in the uh, public debate about the existence of trans people, particularly here in the UK, where that is a an especially toxic conversation right now. Um, and uh, some people argue that the word queer was only ever a slur um, and that they heard it at school from bullies, whereas uh, that they're much more comfortable with the term gay. Um, whereas I, I, I remember both terms being used at me by bullies. I self-identify as, as either. Um, and uh, it, it felt useful and appropriate to add more information about the way in which terms for queer people in general, but specifically uh, people with uh, trans and uh, gender non-conforming and uh, weird gender experiences, um, how those terms have changed and evolved, uh, even in my own lifetime, let alone in the last three or four hundred years uh, in English. And so it seemed, you know, if we're if we're adding extra material to talk about the Spanish term, then there's an opportunity here to do the same and expand that that understanding in English as well, as as you said, Sophia. I think that it's also worth noting something that I don't think was not necessarily intentional when we started this collaborative work, but I know that we've all kind of commented in reflection is that we first started talking back in August about this, um, about doing this together. And really, we didn't let time really be the driver here. Um, really taking the time to bring in that outside expertise when we needed that outside expertise, which has been a really lovely way of working uh, to not, you know, being pushing back against that kind of like sense of urgency that white supremacy has really ingrained in all of us. I know I personally struggle with, with that so it's been just really lovely to to work in this in this way that hasn't been extremely time driven. So I oh go ahead Vic. Just a few words. There are more uh, thanks than anything else. When we made this resource in its moment, we knew not only because of the word travesty, but because of what we wanted to communicate and to share with that resource, that it could result uncomfortable, that it was talking about certain things that make us think in a way. And it was something that happened as part of the Wiki Argentina Wikimedia group when we started to think about this with activists from the uh, LGBTQ community here. And a little bit about the singularity of wanting to translate it and wanting to translate, translate it without this erasure also opens the door to think about what are the possible dialogues interculturally, especially for a community like the community LGBTQ that politically, at least in our territory, depended for so many years of the international support to be able to carry out their activism, taking care of the lives of who was doing that activism. And it's a community that historically has built and has built its sense internationally. And there's something that's a, a there's a sensation or feeling of living in one of the southern countries that a good part of those tools in many cases come from the north. So, for example, when the word queer came to Argentina, it felt colonizing in a way because it was a word that didn't have the trajectory, the linguistic trajectory 
that English, that it has an English, it was a completely foreign word. And in some way it proposed, it made it the limits more, more evasive, more diffuse. When in that moment, the LGBTQ community was what's developed its own terms to carry out their political fights. So it created a lot of tension. And through the years, that word got lexicalized. So it stopped, uh, it started losing its uh, its or origins and it, it's written now in Spanish, queer. And it's the way that the activists in our territory that wanted to use queer as a concept, they did it in a way that allowed for people that did not read English to understand that it was a tool. It wasn't just a word that came from foreign lands. And so for us, it was an exercise that took time. It took debate. It took construction to be able to use that word. And I think it's a gesture of courage to do something similar with the word travesty in English and to also realize that those are the movement. Yes, in French, it means leather. And those are the, the things that make us think of the, the international community to do a collaboration in both ways and to not always be the Southern territories that have to adjust the tools from other Northern territories to be able to use them. Because I think that is something that we can take back and celebrate. That, that reminds me that part of the the reason I was excited to uh, to be involved in adapting this guide is because within the the Wikimedia LGBT plus user group, we're very conscious that a lot of the uh, more active and and frequently engaged users are people who look like me and live in countries that look like this, um, and so we're conscious of a need to to kind of decolonize the user group as it were and to decenter uh the both the use of english but also kind of the predominance of uh white anglophones from the the global north effectively and so being able to to bring this this perspective to a, a wider audience who aren't necessarily aware of the importance of that decolonization and decentering effort is is something that I think is also really important and useful for us to be doing. Thank you so much for all these reflections. I'd love to open up the conversation to other people joining us if anyone has any questions or wants to share some, some of their own reflections, please feel free to, you can either unmute yourself or you can also um, write in the chat. Happy to entertain either option. And you can ask your question or your reflection in um, English, French, or Spanish. We do have all three uh, languages available in today's session. I had almost finished typing that before you preempted me. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a comment on just about the importance of um, in activist movements, um, often there are goals and there are values and principles that are really lovely and strong, but sometimes in an effort to move towards and achieve those goals, we lose track of them and we're like, oh, you have to make this compromise in order to achieve the ends that are going to be better for everyone. I mean, I feel like it's almost like a trope of every dystopian film. Uh, it's like the, the origin story of half the villains. Um, but so what was really interesting for me as someone who's like main work as a, a social scientist was really trying to 
uh, create something, work on something in ways that very much aligned with the values and the world that we are trying to achieve with that tool, right? And so Kira kind of touched a bit on that in terms of talking about um, not adding that like grind set capitalist Western mentality um, to giving ourselves these hard deadlines and, and hitting very specific markers. Um, another part of it that I thought was interesting was every time we were unsure, we just found another person. Um, and so it was a growing collaboration and it very much wasn't about like, oh, who's going to be first author or second author on this paper, which, you know, coming from academia is, you know, you don't want to have a ton of co-authors. You want to keep the glory for yourself. Um, but, you know, we're here doing this work of information activism on Wikipedia, which is about open information, about collaborative writing. Um, and so it was very much... Um, keeping those values as part of a process. Um, and so, um, it, yeah, it's very interesting to like as methodology to watch the evolution of the project um, and kind of very actively pushing against the, um, the values of Western, Northern, Anglo capitalism um, in an effort to create something that embodies what we want to see for the world, but doing it in a manner that also represents those same values. Definitely. To that end, though, I feel like a question may be, so where is this guide? Where is this translation? Um, it's coming. It is currently with the designer who did the initial design for the original version in Spanish. So uh, we're lucky to be working with the same designer for the English version. And we are hopeful to have that available for you at Queering Wikipedia. So that is happening in just uh, a few, like, well, like a, like a month. Um, Vic or Owen, do you want to speak briefly about that convening? Uh, I, I can do. Uh, we have Querying Wikipedia coming up on the 12th, 14th and 17th of May. Uh, that will be a uh, multilingual uh, conference. Uh, with talks and uh, discussions and workshops uh, from around the Wikimedia movement. Um, I'm entirely happy if Z wants to jump in and say something here. Uh, and that conference will also be uh, in English and Spanish, uh, because we're very conscious that the Spanish language uh, members of the user group have been very active over the last year or so. Um, and as I mentioned, we want to decenter English from being the, the kind of primary working language of the user group. Um, Z, do you want to add anything? Um, I can only uh, maybe a little bit scale down expectations. <laughs> we will we will primarily be bilingual, uh, Spanish English, and we will make efforts to support other languages partly. Um, so at least with translation and when we can also interpretation, but it will not be the full conference. Uh, so multilingual will be still mainly bilingual. <laughs> but uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, thank you, Owen and Z, for sharing about that. Um, we all look forward to, to joining you all for Queering Wikipedia. And definitely, you know, expressing gratitude and grace around creating multilingual spaces. Uh, we know also that it is not um, an easy task but it's something that we have um, room for growth. But I think that, you know, we're all, it's all um, just kind of like, I see you is kind of what I guess I'm saying there. <laughs> um, 
I do want to, uh, as we're closing out here for this session, I want to point out that we do still have some exciting programming happening today. Um, uh, Nina will be leading a session uh, very shortly that will be about um, expanding upon um, a gift workshop. Um, I don't, Nina, if you wanted to unmute and speak a little bit to that, I definitely welcome that. Yes, hey everyone. So starting, I guess, in about 25 minutes, um, we are going to be playing around in the commons, looking for really cool images to turn into gifts. Um, it's kind of a follow-up to our colleague Madhavi Gandhi's tutorial uh, that she led about a month ago. So um, it should be fun and hope to see you all there. Yes, so thank you, Nina, for that. That's gonna be a great session that, uh, between Nina and Madhavi. They've already prepared some really great resources to just kind of dive in there and start making some, some gifts. Um, and then we, of course, have our virtual editing rooms that are still open. Uh, we have some working lists that we're working on today. So I uh, want to uh, invite you all to all of that. And then uh, we'll, we'll hope to see you in some of those spaces. And then we'll have our closing later today. But thank you, uh, Vic, Owen, Sophia for joining me in this conversation about this and, and for collaborating with me on this, um, this guide. It's been really quite a joy. And uh, thank you to our interpreters today for the session. And we will see you in another space shortly. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.